Bwana Dennis Itumbi is in the news. This is a very controversial Kenyan who obviously has a very controversial past. Apparently, today, he was just going about his uh, normal, ordinary day-to-day -day business somewhere at City Hall. And then suddenly, pop, akakamatwa. And so far, there seems to be very little information coming in from DCI. Yeah, that's the Directorate of uh, Criminal Investigations. Now, let me start by saying I was very reluctant to do this particular video. Why? Because I have a golden rule. Yeah, and the golden rule is never kick somebody yeah, when they're already on the ground. Let me explain. In the run-up to the 2017 general elections, and immediately after those very controversial presidential and general elections, this particular channel <laughs> had very many challenges. Things were done to us yeah, whose objective clearly was to have this channel completely shut down. And I'm lucky because I have some very smart people yeah, who help me out. And we managed to trace our troubles yeah, right to the doorstep of Bonaitumbi. And so, after those elections were over and the president was safely back inside State House, things started going very wrong for Bonaitumbi. He obviously did not enjoy the same power he had enjoyed before. And then Kanze Dena was appointed here as a state house spokesperson. And the whole communication team of the president was reorganized. And what happened is that Bonaitumbi suddenly found himself with an office outside state house. Yeah, because until then, his office was right inside state house Nairobi. And when all these misfortunes befell him, yeah, there are very many people who came and said, Chris, do this video. Why have you not done this video? This man gave you a few sleepless nights. Yeah, now is your turn. And I ignored the pressure. Yeah, and I believe I said the same on this channel. I said I never kick somebody when they're down uh, on the ground. Yeah, because that's just not me. Indeed, I even did a video on an upcoming uh, book yeah, when I be supposed to be writing, yeah, which can be considered promotional. Yeah. Anyway, the book was interesting, the subject matter was interesting, and I covered it. Rosafi. I also try very hard not to hold grudges. Yeah, I'm human, of course, and sometimes I get uh, <laughs> very hard, but I try my best never to hold grudges. This life is too short for that. But finally, <laughs> I find myself doing a video yeah, on the latest development concerning Bonadini Situmbi. And what I have decided to do is to do it in a very sensitive way. And what I want to focus on is lessons we should take away. Now, President Uru Kenyatta hired Dennis Situmbi yeah, to do communications work for him before he was president. And indeed, when not many people knew who Dennis Itumbi was, he was not as well known as he is today. And the man is a very gifted, talented young man. No doubt about that. Lesson number one, you may be very talented, excellent at what you do, but you'll not be able to go very far yeah, for very long without principles. Now, admittedly, principles are very difficult to stick to, especially when you have to put food on the table, and it gets increasingly difficult to do so. However, you have no choice. Now, I have a confession to make. Yeah, initially, this is something that I've always found very difficult to agree with. For years, my political lecturer tried to drum it into me. Yeah, but uh, it entered one year, as we say in Kenya, and exited quickly from the other year. Yeah, I never took it. But I'm grateful to Almighty God because finally I embraced it. There are things I can never do for any amount of money. Lesson number two, be nice to people 
Yeah, and be considerate as you climb up the ladder of success. Why? Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow <laughs> is confidential. Yeah, as far as God is concerned. So be careful, take precautions. Because you may need those people when you come tumbling down that ladder. Lesson number three. As a human being, you'll often find yourself in a situation where it is very difficult to do the right thing. Where if you do the right thing, in fact, there'll be consequences, dire consequences to yourself. Still, strive, do your best, do everything in your power to always do the right thing. Resist the temptation to do the convenient thing. And if you happen to be working for a government that is doing things yeah, that will make you have nightmares later, yeah, things which prick at your conscience, resign. And there are many examples, although I can't give them on an open channel, of people who are serving this government yeah, in the run-up to the 2017 elections and after who opted to resign, who asked to be reassigned now, I appreciate the fact that not everybody listening to this video has understood everything that I've said. Yeah, and I'm afraid I can't uh, elaborate. But let's come back to the facts concerning our good friend, Dennis Tumbe. Multiple sources say yeah, that uh, Bonai Tumbe's latest troubles have something to do with that very controversial letter yeah, concerning the alleged yeah, attempt against the deputy president's life. What many in the opposition are now calling the fake assassination. Now, it is instructive and very interesting that just a few days ago, the DCI released a statement and said they had narrowed down their search for the source of that letter to two aides yeah, at the deputy president's office. And most of you already know that Bonadeni Situmbi operates from an office within the deputy president's office. And not only that, we also know yeah, that investigators had asked for help from outside the country yeah, to be able to trace over the web the source of that particular controversial letter. Now, Denis Situmbi has not yet been charged, yeah, but if there's going to be any charges preferred uh, on him, it is most likely going to be something linked yeah, to the said controversial letter. Now, it is also true to say that because of what he does, Bonaitumbi has managed to accumulate quite a number of enemies. Also because of his mannerisms, yeah, the way he has behaved in the past, especially when he appears on TV talk shows, yeah, his arrogant nature, yeah, uh, he has been able to accumulate quite a lot of enemies. And many of these enemies are tonight celebrating. Yeah, but I have a word of caution for them. There is no reason to celebrate. Indeed, what should really concern Kenyans, yeah, rather than celebrating, is that the trajectory, yeah, and the direction investigative agencies in the country are taking is very disturbing. If information emerges that somebody's life is in danger, yeah, the most important thing is to fully, exhaustively, extensively investigate whether that information is correct or not. Yeah. But the way things have happened in Kenya is that right from the word go, the emphasis was on finding the source of the letter. Meaning that the assumption by investigators, right from the word go, is that the uh, claims were false, yeah, that the information was incorrect. Now, I have a problem with that. Yeah, It takes time to verify whether information is correct or not, especially this kind of sensitive information that came out of this uh, so-called letter about an alleged plot. In my view, it should completely be separated from politics. Yeah, because it's somebody's life we're talking about, whether you like that person or not. 
And unfortunately, what has come out in this particular case is that the ODM political party are reading from the same script as the DCI, as investigators. Yeah, because opposition talks about fake assassination. And we know that the way the investigation has been handled so far, the assumption is that the letter is fake. Or rather, the contents of that letter are fake. Yeah, it's misinformation. Yeah, and this is probably what has led uh, to the arrest of uh, Bona David Tumbi. And that is just my view. Yeah, I don't, obviously, I don't have as much information as inv investigators do. And probably they have information which is not yet in the public domain or which have not yet come across, yeah, which has caused them to behave in the manner in which they're behaving. Yeah, that is also possible. Now, I know many regulars on this channel may be surprised yeah, at the way I've approached this particular topic. However, I hasten to add something yeah, which is very important. I will never support the deputy president. Yeah, I have nothing personal against him, but I will never support him because my conscience can never allow me to support him. I will never in a hundred years support his bid for the presidency. My conscience will just not allow it. Based on what I know, based on all the information I've gathered, since I started covering the deputy president, when he was a mere assistant minister yeah, in the Moi government. However, what I do on this channel is to analyze politics in Kenya without fear or favor, which demands that I be balanced, yeah, that I support no side. I don't support the side that is anti-DP Ruto, and neither do I support DP Ruto. However, this issue, the current issue surrounding the deputy president, is beyond politics. And it is highly sensitive. And the deputy president, above everything else, is a human being. Yeah, and he has rights as a human being. And above all, I fear God. Yeah, and God is God. If God wants the deputy president to be the next president of Kenya, no human being, no spiritual being can stop that. We all wait with great interest to see how this Dennis Itumbi saga yeah, unravels. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.